This rapidly evaporating liquid helium cools until at two degrees above absolute zero, a dramatic transformation takes place. Suddenly, you see that the bubbling stops and that the surface of the liquid helium is completely still. The temperature is actually being lowered even further now, but nothing particularly is happening. Well, this, this is really one of the great phenomena in, in 20th century physics. The liquid helium had turned into a superfluid, which displays some really odd properties. Here I have a beaker with an unglazed ceramic bottom of ultrafine porosity. Ordinarily, this container with tiny pores can hold liquid helium. But the moment the helium turns superfluid, it leaks through. We call this kind of flow a superflow. Superfluid helium can do things we might have believed impossible. It appears to defy gravity. A thin film can climb walls and escape its container. This is because a superfluid has zero viscosity. It can even produce a frictionless fountain, one that never stops flowing. Superfluidity and superconductivity were baffling concepts for scientists. New radical theories were needed to explain them. Helium is the one substance that never freezes no matter how cold you get it. It becomes a liquid all the way down to the lowest possible temperature. However, it does change its state at a certain point. When you cool it down by pumping away its vapor. That makes it colder and colder. And as you pump its vapor, it, it boils frantically. And then all of a sudden, at a certain point, it very dramatically, it suddenly stops boiling. and becomes dead still. But it doesn't change into a solid. It just changes into a different kind of a fluid. And that fluid is called the superfluid. And it was the explanation of superfluidity in liquid helium that Feynman provided us with. Now, one of the properties, one of the very, very strange properties of the superfluid, which exists only at extremely low temperatures, is that it can flow under certain circumstances without any resistance at all, without any viscosity. Well, this was discovered sometime back in the 1930s. Uh, and in particular, one great Russian physicist, Lev Landau, came up with a partial explanation for it. We did understand that the answer would be quantum mechanical. And the way you do quantum mechanics is that you write down a certain equation and then you find solutions of this equation. But the equation for liquid helium would have to describe the state of this stuff, of this liquid, in terms of the positions of all of its atoms. Now, a reasonable amount of, uh, of liquid helium has a number of atoms that would be written as a 1 with 24 zeros after it. And the equation would have to involve writing a function that depended on the positions of all of those atoms you couldn't write that function down on the biggest piece of paper in the world or on the biggest book in the world. You couldn't begin to think of actually writing it down and doing the, doing the problem the way we do conventional quantum mechanics. And so it would seem to be, it seemed that the problem would be intractable, hopeless. But Feynman decided to think about it. He said, well, let me imagine. Suppose I had a, a, a bucket of liquid helium and I had the, the function for that bucket. All right, now, how would it change if I took one atom from here and moved it over to here? And he said, oh, no, that would raise the energy a lot. That can't be the right answer. I'm looking for an answer. And he said, well, suppose I rearranged these atoms around and I rearranged those atoms around a little bit. How would that... And he, he reasoned all of this through, giving the answer that quantum mechanics would give, not the exact uh, quantitative answer, but qualitatively, he knew in general terms how this would work. And finally, he figured out, well, the best I can do, the lowest energy that I can possibly create, must have this general sort of form. And with that, he was able to do a little bit of simple, elegant mathematics, not a great deal of very complicated mathematics, and came out with exactly the form that Landau had predicted liquid helium would have to have. And that constitutes our understanding of why liquid helium behaves the way it does.